Right, everybody, I went and picked up a whole bunch of stuff for the vintage line shaft shop that I'm trying to put together. And I got to thank my buddy, uh, Captain Greenbush. I'll put a link to his channel at the end of the video. Uh, but let's go have a look and see what he sent me up with. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. So here's the first thing that I think is kind of neat. Uh, the McMaster car catalog. I mean, who doesn't need one of these things? And they're kind of, I guess, hard to get rid of, or, <laughs> sorry, I guess they're kind of hard to get a hold of. I mean, this would be an expensive book to send out to just anybody that wanted one, but, I mean, they got just oodles and oodles of things, tools, fasteners. I mean, you can buy whole machines, I think, out of here. This is a very good book to have, and uh, that was that was nice of him to give me, give me a spare one that he had. You can go online and look this stuff up, but the nice thing about having a book is, you know, you can just kind of thumb through this thing and you might find stuff that you, you didn't really realize you even needed to have, you know. Uh, you're probably not going to just stumble across it, you know, trying to find whatever you're looking for on their web page. So anyway, so that's the first thing. So here's another kind of neat thing. And this is a, uh, it's like a quick change tool post shop made. So I guess this is the tool post and the clamp, and this is one of the blocks. And it's got a screw here so you can, you know, set your height, lock it down like that. It's kind of neat. It looks like a boring bar holder. Well, you can really, that's a, like a one inch boring bar. Anyway, a couple other tool blocks here, uh, different sizes even, but it might be useful. It might fit on my uh, my Atlas lathe, so we'll have to uh, give that a try and see what see how that works. All right, now here we're starting to get into some really interesting stuff. So here, this is a uh, this is actually pretty old. Um, I think these are carbide inserts, but they're wedged inserts. Uh, I don't really know if they make this sort of a a setup anymore. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if this will actually work on my on my mill. I'll have to make a you know, I'd have to make a, a larger arbor. I think the biggest one I have is uh like an inch and that's I don't know, that looks like almost maybe an inch and a half. But uh what was it saying here? Well, anyway, this is a six and three quarter inch diameter cutter, so that's that's pretty big, and it's 0.993 wide, I guess. So that's a big cutter. If you had to buy that, that would be really, really, really expensive. And the other one here, I guess this is probably for cutting a groove or something. But uh, at any rate, two flutes, and they've made they made some kind of a you know an adapter here. Uh, most likely to put it into a bridge port, but it has a kind of a similar thing. This this would be, mount a lot better onto a horizontal mill. All right, well, let's see what else we got here. All right, Woo. now we're really getting into interesting stuff, aren't we? So this is a hanger bearing, but this is not your typical type of hanger bearing. This one's uh, meant to mount on a post. Uh, you can see here they got a, a little boss right here and our guess is probably that you would you know if you had a whole series of posts you could kind of put a layout line uh, bore a hole and then you could slip that in there and then you could you know clamp this thing up maybe i guess and then you get it all dialed in and you got a lot of adjustment right here there's a height adjustment go you know to raise this little yoke up and down that looks like a set screw probably to lock the rotation on that and the bearing, you can see it tips. It's on uh, two centers here on these screws. And you can adjust that this way. And of course it, you know, will self align in that direction very easily. So uh, this here, it says one and three quarters inches. So this is, this is a pretty good size shaft you can put into this thing. So uh, I plan to take this one here and make reproductions of it. I think this would be a pretty good way for me to run probably a lot of my shop off of this sort of a hanger. But uh, give me one second here, I got something else. All right. 
Here's another pretty nice hanger bearing. And uh, not sure exactly what size that is. That's probably uh, well, at least an inch. There's a three on this on this bearing block here. So this one, this is kind of neat. You have this piece right here that you can remove, which is nice because that allows you access to, uh, you know, take your shaft down or, or, you know, maybe when you're even installing it, you could put all the pulleys together on it and then place it in there instead of trying to slide the whole shaft through all the bearings and uh, trying to get it lined up that way. So that, that makes, you know, for maintenance and things like that, you know, that, that that's a really nice feature. A lot of them are just solid. Uh, another interesting thing, these screws right here for adjustment, these are actually cast. So that's kind of interesting. You don't see, you know, cast threads are not a very common thing. And they're not perfect, that's for sure, but hey, they did the job all them years. And I believe this one is a ring oiled Take this block out of here. Take this out. Yeah, see? So these rings, when the shaft is spinning, you can see in the top, there's notches cut out. So there'll be a reservoir of oil in there. And these rings will just sort of tumble along on the top of the, the uh, shaft, and it'll draw oil up on top of the shaft, and then that's how the, how the bearings get lubricated. So that'll be kind of an interesting casting project here. And this area actually is a very simple piece right here. That may not even really require any uh, any fancy stuff. Might fill that, I guess, maybe a little bit. Or I guess we could just leave it cast and just retouch it with a drill. Actually, that's pretty spherical. They may have uh, used a ball mill or something maybe there. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's see. Oh, here, we got a size written on there. That is, uh, it says one and three sixteenths. So there we go. It's interesting that shafting like this is usually, it's usually not right on a size. It's, uh, they're always in like sixteenths. And there's always uh, either a little under or over the inch for some reason. And I'm sure somebody out there knows, but uh, maybe they could explain that to me why. All right, we've got some more. Let's go get the next piece. All right, guys, here's a here's a really nice wooden flat belt pulley. Uh, wooden ones, uh, that's probably going back into the 1800s. Uh, later on, you know, they started uh, making cast iron ones, and then even uh, that, you know, because light is a good thing as far as most of this goes usually, and some of them they even have like like where the rim is made out of sheet metal and it's riveted on to a cast iron hub. Um, anyway, the neat thing about this one is this whole section right here, this is cast. And uh, it says three, I guess that must be three inches or made to go onto the outside. But um, this is something that I could take and I can, I can recast this piece and I could build my own wheels uh, any size I need as long as it's you know at least as big as this is right so uh, if I need to make pretty good size ones that's a that's a pretty good size you know bearing or uh, you know that could clamp straight to a shaft I suppose probably probably I'm not gonna clamp straight to a shaft that big but uh, you know I could I could turn up something and there's spots here for some set screws one on each side so uh, this one has got damage to it, though. It's missing some wood over here. There. A little another big chunk missing right there. Uh, but the good thing is, you know, it's not a complicated thing, really. Um, and the way this is built, it tells the whole story for me. So it makes a very good example of what a guy would need to make. So I've got uh, at least one more piece here. Let me go grab that. All right. Woo! Holy moly, that is a big one right there. That thing must weigh at least 50 pounds or more. Anyway, um, this one here, the only problem with this one is, uh, you know, we don't have the bearing block. So, but that shouldn't be too big of a thing. Um, probably the style that would be in here, uh, he calls it uh, kind of a, a cannon barrel, I guess a barrel style bearing. 
Uh, essentially, it's just a small piece of uh, shaft that's drilled. And, you know, normally they have kind of a profile turn, but then it'll have just two spots for these centers to go into. And uh, that wouldn't be too big of a project. And this thing here would, wouldn't make a very complicated casting. Uh, it's pretty big. <laughs> uh, that it would be expensive if you needed to make a whole bunch of those, but uh, this this here would support a pretty heavy heavy shaft. So if anybody needs one of those, just let me know, or you know, a few of them, however many you would need. Pretty much all these castings I'm showing, I, I plan to to turn them into patterns. I'm not going to use the original. Um, it's getting harder and harder to find these things. I mean, you can find them. Here I am with some, right? But uh, every year this stuff is getting scrapped and uh, the competition for guys like me that are trying to, you know, put together a shop that uses one, uh, you know, there's only so much out there in circulation. So I want to try to put some extra ones back into circulation to make up what's been lost over the years. Right, everybody. I hope you all found that interesting. Uh, if anybody wants any of these, uh, you know, reproduction castings that I'm making, please, you know, get a hold of me. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to, you know, make up a big batch of them and then and then we can dole them around, you know. Anyway, if you want to support the shop, uh, please check out my Patreon and uh, watch the rest of the videos that I got showing up here at the bottom.